Hi, my name is Michael, also known as Yeoman, and this is what will probably be the most controversial episode of Yeoman University, an episode on spanking and, spoilers, why you shouldn't do it. The problems I see with spanking. Now, before we go very far, I need to give a series of disclaimers um, because I am not joking when I say this might be the most controversial topic I could possibly cover. I could put forth an alternative view of 9-11 and get less pushback than I will likely get for making this video. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I think it's extremely important and I obviously believe I'm correct about what I'm going to put forward here, but I need to have a few disclaimers. First of all, the biggest objection someone could have to listening to my opinion on spanking is very simple. I do not have any children. And that is simply true. I can't refute that. I'm a young man. I'm getting married later this fall. I do not have any children. What I am going to discuss here, I'm taking from science. I'm taking from scripture. I'm taking from the saints. And I'm taking from logic. But I am not taking from experience. All right? That does not refute the other things I'm taking from. Just because I didn't experience this stuff doesn't mean the saints are wrong about it, for instance. So, but bear that in mind. If you're here looking for a, a parent's guide to spanking or not spanking, or you want to know me anecdotally, my experience, I can't give it to you. Um, I was spanked personally. This, this also goes into my bias. Some people might say like, oh, well, you were probably spanked and that's why you're against it or something, which is an interesting thing to say, first of all. Um, I was raised by two different parental figures. Um, when I was a young child until the age of five, I was raised by my meth addicted parents who did spank me. And after that, I was raised by my non meth addicted grandparents who did not spank me, but were equally bad parents. Let's just be clear. So I am not saying the only bad thing you can do is spanking or, or anything like that, or that spanking necessarily means you're just an atrocious parent, although that's a little closer to... Let's not go there quite yet. Let's ease in. But so I just want to put that out there. Those are That's my bias. Um, also, another reason someone might not want to listen to what I have to say about this is if you watch like my other videos on this channel, on Twitch, anything like that, um, you might say, this is a vulgar young man who is basically a wannabe comedian who plays video games on the internet, and he's going to tell me how I should parent my children. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's completely fair. And I would just say that you should listen to the Bible when it says, question everything and hold fast to what is good. Just because I am not some university professor or a priest or what have you, doesn't mean that what I am saying cannot be true, right? That's all I'm saying. I just ask that you, you keep an open mind and listen to what's being said. There's a reason I'm going to be using scripture and the saints because I know that me alone, what do I, you know, I have no authority here. Um, perfectly reasonable. I just want to get that out of the way. Please keep an open mind just because the person giving the information does not determine whether or not the information is true, okay? So, with that out of the way, I don't think there's any other disclaimers I need to give here, other than, I will say, I am going to be operating under the assumption, and I hope you will too, in return, I'm going to be operating under the assumption that we're both of goodwill here, right? I want to raise my children the best possible way, and I want them to get to heaven. I'm assuming that you want the same thing, and so that is where this conversation is going. If that's not what you want, then like, there's no point in even having this conversation. Um, and I will say also, this discussion about spanking is from a traditional Catholic perspective. That's what I am. I'm a, I'm a Catholic. I believe all the teachings of the church. That's the perspective this is coming from. Will it be useful to somebody who perhaps is Christian but not Catholic? Absolutely. The scientific stuff would still apply. The scripture would still apply. They probably wouldn't care about what the saints have to say. <laughs> I think they should, but they probably wouldn't. If you are not any form of Christian, then most of this will not apply to you. Although I think some of the my own objections I put towards the end would apply, and obviously the scientific part would still apply. Um, but other than that, it would maybe be like half applicable, unless you're just interested. So that's another thing to put up front, is that this is coming from a Catholic perspective. 
And again, <laughs> that is why this is a controversial thing to say. There are certainly Catholics who are against banking. There are, as I will go into, there are certainly traditional Catholics who are against banking. But many Catholics, especially traditional Catholics, spank. And just before, this is a long preface, but I think it's worth saying, I understand that. Before I researched more into spanking and whether or not it was moral and whether or not it worked and all of this, I planned on spanking my kids. And a lot of that comes from just a reaction to what you see in the world today. You see people who act badly and seem to have no discipline, not know wrong from right, or at least not be able to live wrong from right. And you have the, the conclusion in your head that like, well, they should have been spanked. They should have had some discipline put into them. Um, I have completely changed my mind on that 100%, but I understand, right? I held the same view as many of you probably do now. I get it. Um, okay, so from the beginning, uh, we are going to be tackling this issue from a number of categories. First, we're going to start out with scientifically what is the science behind spanking? Does it work? What effects does it have on the child looking at studies that have been done on children who were spanked versus not spanked? Two, we will be looking at scripture. What does scripture have to say about spanking? Um, what does it have to say about corporal punishment? Um, what are verses often used in favor and against spanking? And we will cover both. Um, I'm trying to give a accurate depiction of people who oppose my view. I'm not trying to straw man anybody. Um, I'm doing my best here. Uh, then we will go into what do the saints say about corporal punishment, about spanking. And then we'll go into my own personal objections, which you could put under the topic of just like logic, of just like thinking through the implications of spanking, what it, um, what it actually teaches, and other sort of scriptural um, and canon law and how it ties in. Okay, right off the bat, we're starting with the science. And that is not because I think the science is the most important or the least important or anything like that. It is simply because this prefaces a lot of things. Um, knowing this colors a lot of the rest of the judgment. And that is that scientifically, spanking does not work. There are study after study that show negative consequences of spanking, such as decreased IQ, for instance. And now, I will say that many people bring up a legitimate logical concern. And they say, these studies often, often, not always, often, include things other than spanking in their studies versus people, versus kids who weren't spanked. What I mean by that is there would be two groups. There'd be like a placebo group, the group who is not spanked. And then there's the group that is spanked, but also that might include using an implement, or other things that even people who do spank would say, well, that's abuse. Obviously, it's going to have negative effects. So, the best study I can, I can show you um, to prove this point, and there's many that you can go into and read, but the most convincing is a 2016 meta-study by Gershoff and Grogan Kaler. And in that study, they addressed the fact that many of these studies um, had confounding elements, that they had things that didn't fit into what was actually that confounded whether or not you were looking at spanking or you were looking at other kinds of abuse. So they made a meta-study looking at 75 different studies which simply looked at spanking. Like, specifically, open hand on butt. Nothing else. All right? No other confounding factors. And when they looked at those 75 studies, they found that spanking was correlated with child aggression, antisocial behavior, mental health problems, impaired cognitive ability, as in lower IQ, which has been found in many studies, and a lower moral internalization. Now let's be clear, that is exactly the thing that people are trying not to do with spanking. If you ask someone what their goal is with spanking, a simplified version of the answer would just be to get them to not do bad things or to get them to understand that what they're doing is wrong. Scientifically, 
it has been shown that spanking correlates to the opposite of that. It correlates with the child not internalizing morals. Now, I will get into why I think that is later and why logically that makes a lot of sense. But I think these 75 studies are a good place to start just to show that, and on the alternative, let's just say there are few, if any, studies that show any positive effect of spanking. I found one, I've heard of four perhaps, and those studies seem to show simply that the child stops doing whatever you were trying to get them to do. That seems to be the effect of spanking. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. It does not, however, those studies do not refute all of these negative effects. So I think that's a good place to start. 75 studies that show these negative effects, including low moral internalization. And you have to ask yourself, if spanking is not leading to your child actually knowing what is right and wrong, then why are you doing it? Okay. That's, where I, that's, that's the starting point, and I think that's important. Now, we get a little more religious. That's, that's almost a preface as well. There's a lot of preface in all of this. Um, what does scripture say about spanking? Well, first of all, I have to point out that spanking is not somehow special. And we'll get into this later, but scripture has literally nothing to say about spanking. Because spanking is not in the Bible. Um, like, ha open hand, on butt is not in the Bible. There's talk of corporal punishment or beating, um, but not spanking specifically. Um, unless there's something I'm missing, I, I will admit at any point in this if I'm wrong on, on some point. Absolutely. But spanking itself, as far as I know, is not ever mentioned in the Bible, but corporal punishment is, so that's what we'll be talking about here. Um, first, I'll give a few lines of scripture that support not spanking your child. I had this written down, so I remember it. First is Colossians 3.21, which says, Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Remember that, by the way, lest they become discouraged. That will come up again later. Second is Ephesians 6.4, which speaks similarly. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And then Psalm 22.4, which says, Thy rod and they, thy staff, they comfort me. And the reason this is important is because of that word rod, um, which we will get very into in a second. I just want to point out here that this refers to the rod comforting, which would seem to go against the rod being used to beat the child. Now, there are some people who object to this. They object specifically to these Bible verses as they are used to be against spanking. And so I want to address specifically the arguments used by people who refute those verses. And so I found an article, uh, just a tiny little article, done by Taylor Marshall. Now, I'm not like a big Taylor Marshall fan. I'm not a big Taylor Marshall opponent. I don't really follow the whole like Catholic news and like Twitter and stuff like that. Um, but I have nothing against Taylor Marshall. A lot of the stuff I've read from him is really good. Um, I don't know specifics of his life or anything enough to judge him in any way. I don't, you know, don't take this as an endorsement or um, something against him. I think he seems like a very intelligent man, and uh, that's all I can really say. He wrote, I think he's respected enough that talking about his points is reasonable, right? So he has this article where he lays out these verses and a couple of other things, but I'm going to focus mainly on the points that I was making anyway, and what he said to refute them, he did it in a Thomistic style, just like, um, just like Thomas Aquinas did in the Summa Theologica. He said, these are the objections to spanking, and then he tried to refute those objections. So, first of all, he gave his own verses in response. One verse he gave, Proverbs 13, 24, which, to get it specifically, I forgot to write it down earlier, is, he that spareth the rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him correcteth him betimes. That's from the Doe Reims, by the way. That's the translation I use. But it is very important, I think, to remember that this is a translation. And so I looked at, okay, it says to, that you need to use the rod on your son. Well, I looked up the word rod in the Latin Vulgate, which is the oldest translation of the Bible that we have, approved by the church, and it is the official Catholic translation of the Bible. 
made by St. Jerome and using sources that we no longer have. Okay? So, in Proverbs 13, 24, the word used for rod is verge. Now, you may tell by my pronunciation that I don't know Latin. And I will be upfront about that. I do not know Latin. I go to Latin Mass. I know some Latin. But I don't know Latin. I was never instructed in Latin. I never learned Latin. But even I, a fool, can tell when the same word is used in other passages. I can look at the Vulgate and see verge is used for rod. And then I can look at other places in the Vulgate that use that same word verge. So that's what I did. Other places that it is used is Exodus 4.2, where the word is used for the staff of Moses. I don't remember Moses beating anyone with that staff, but also the word is found in Psalm 22.4 that I mentioned before, where it says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The word rod is verge, once again, or a conjugation of the word, but the same word. And it is also found in Leviticus 27.32, where it refers specifically to a shepherd's rod, rod being the verge. And it's used in this context, the rod is being used to count sheep. Now, shepherds do not beat their sheep. They guide them. In fact, if you were to beat your sheep as a shepherd, you would really hurt your livelihood, not just because of you might kill one of them, but also because it hurts their fertility. Even a loud noise can hurt the fertility of a sheep. It is the shepherd's job with that staff to guide and protect them, not to beat them. My point here is that the assumption that in the verse, Proverbs 13, 24, it must be referring to beating the child with a rod is inane, is completely conjecture. Because there are other points in the Bible where it is not translated that way at all. Again, when it says d discipline, the translation for that is also teach, not beat. Or And the words being used in the Latin are not words that mean beat your child. You could interpret it that way if you wish, but it makes more sense to interpret them in context with the rest of Scripture. And in context with the rest of Scripture, it doesn't make any sense. And certainly, it is only conjecture that you think it should be interpreted that way. Now, there's one other Bible verse that he did not bring up, but I do think it is a reasonable, even a better response to um, anyone who is anti-spanking. And that is Proverbs 23, 13 to 12, where it says to strike him with a rod, that you should strike your child with a rod, and it says um, that he will not die from that. Again, the word for rod is the same word meaning staff in other contexts, and even the word that is translated as strike, percutio, can in Latin mean either strike, physical strike, or to make an impression on the mind. Again, if you choose to translate it as strike, that is your interpretation. It is completely possible using the word that is in the Latin that it means to make an impression on the mind. And some translations don't use the word strike, probably for that reason. And I think the important point here is not that my translation is correct. As I said, I don't know Latin. It is to show that you are having an interpretation here and that you should view it in context with the rest of the faith so that you know what interpretation should be made. Okay, now other things he points out in regards to the verses that, that I've pointed out before in favor of not spanking. He says because of Proverbs 13, 24, that it is lawful to strike your child with the rod. And so I ask, does he? Because if you do take this literally and you take the interpretation that it means striking your child with a rod, does he strike his child with a rod? Because most people who are in defense of spanking would not strike their child with a rod. So they have to play this mental gymnastics. And I mean this, I don't mean this as an insult, but what I'm saying is they have to do this mental gymnastics where they are using this Bible verse to defend their actions, and yet the action they think the verse describes is something they themselves would not do and would not defend. It's a weird cognitive dissonance which does not come up 
if you interpret the verse as being about guidance and guiding your child with the staff. Now, he also brings up, he says that the rod can be used in charity, that spanking can be used in charity, and spanking can be used in patience. And as for charitable, I will have a lot to say about that later. But first of all, I will say, if it is charitable to beat someone when they do something wrong, why does the priest not do it to you after confession? That's, that's number one. He has, he has authority over you, yes? In fact, that's one of the examples people use to say why the father has authority over his child is it's the domestic church. So why is, does the priest not beat you? And would it be okay if he did? I'm not saying necessarily it wouldn't. I'm just, I'm just pointing that out. Second, patience. I have never seen someone spank their child out of patience, and I've seen a number of people spank their children. Now, that's anecdotal, of course. But usually, and the saints will have something to say on this later, usually it is done out of anger and a lack of patience. The patient thing to do would be to have mercy on your child and to explain to them what they're doing wrong. But instead of having the patience to give them an explanation, you beat them. Further, Taylor Marshall says that the line about Colossians 3.21 and Ephesians 6.4, where it says, fathers do not provoke your children, he says that it is not provoking if it does not wound them. Now, two responses to this. One, it doesn't wound them. Spanking does wound. That's the intent. That's what you're trying to accomplish by spanking. So I don't understand what he means by that. And second, where is that found in the verse. The verse doesn't say that provoking only happens when you wound your child. The verse just says fathers do not provoke your children so that they do not become discouraged. I don't know where he got the idea that you have to wound them for it to be provoking. I certainly don't think that. Common sense would dictate that that isn't true. You can easily provoke someone with words alone. So I don't know what he means by that. It's, it's complete conjecture and I don't want to speculate into the thinking of Taylor Marshall, but I would guess, obviously, I think it's a fair guess, that he spanks his own children. And I think the position of spanking your own children is hard to defend, and so you end up with defenses such as this that don't make any sense. There's nowhere in the verse where it says that provoking only happens when you wound the child, nor does it make any sense that spanking doesn't wound a child. He also says that the rod comforting as it says in Psalm 22.4, he says that the removal of sin is comforting. Therefore, since spanking is for the removal of sin, it is comforting. I believe he uses the word vice, not sin. And this is even more questionable because that's impossible. It is impossible to remove vice by beating someone because vice has to be done as a willful choice. So if you force the person not to do something, you haven't removed any vice at all. We'll get back to that. I think it's a very important point. But those are the objections brought up by Taylor Marshall and the objections I saw in other places. I think it's a good summary of the objections. And I think none of them hold to scrutiny. Now, we ask, what did the saints have to say about corporal punishment? And I actually could not find any saints in favor of corporal punishment. I would not be surprised if it exists. And I would not be surprised if it had to do with what was the norm at the time. But I can't say either way. But I found three examples of saints specifically talking about corporal punishment against corporal punishment. One is St. John Chrysostom, Doctor of the Church. St. John Chrysostom, in a sermon he gave titled, An Address on Vainglory and the Right Way for Parents to Bring Up Their Children, he was talking about putting up laws for your children to follow. And he said, in this context, if thou shouldest see him, your son, transgressing this law, punish him, now with a stern look, now with incisive, now with reproachful words, at other times, win him with gentleness and promises, have not recourse to blows, and accustom him not to be trained by the rod. For if he feel it, he will learn to despise it. And when he has learned to despise it, he has reduced thy system to naught. Couple key points to take away from this, I believe, is first, he says, have not recourse to blows. 
Second, he says that if you do have recourse to blows, your child will despise the way in which you are bringing him up, and that will invalidate all of it. I think that's an important point. Second, we have St. John Baptiste de La Salle, who said, The birch is used only out of bad temper and weakness, referring to the birch used for corporal punishment. Similar to what you might see in a school back in the day with a ruler or something like that. The birch is used only out of bad temper and weakness. For the birch is a servile punishment which degrades the soul even when it corrects. If it indeed corrects, for the usual effect is to burden. Again, key points here. One is that if you are using corporal punishment, it is because you have a bad temper and weakness. And he says that is the only case it is used. This is a saint saying that is the only case in which corporal punishment is used. He says it degrades the soul, and he says it usually doesn't work. Finally, we have St. John Bosco, who you might know ran an orphanage. You might not know that he never, ever spanked or used corporal punishment on any of those children. And he said, to strike a child in any way and other similar punishments must be absolutely avoided. So the saints speak very strongly against corporal punishment. Even a saint such as John Chrysostom, a doctor of the church, and a saint such as John Bosco, who worked with children. Now, four, my own objections to spanking. This draws on a lot of what we've talked about so far, but these are my own logical objections to spanking. One is, as I said before, spanking is not special. There is not something special about hitting your child on the butt that makes it not beating your child. Most people who are okay with spanking would not beat their child, but that is what they are doing. It's so simple, but it bears repeating. There is nothing special about your child's butt that makes it okay. Because if you were to spank an adult on the butt, you would go to jail. If you were to hit your child somewhere else, you would likely go to jail. But there is nothing special about their butt. The only reason the butt is used is twofold. One, it's particularly degrading. And two, it doesn't leave a mark. Or if it does leave a mark, you can't see it. Most people would not beat their ch child on the face. But why? If you're using the Bible to defend your actions and saying that you should be able to use the rod, then you should be there with a rod hitting your child, likely on the chest or on the back. The Bible does not say to do it on the butt. But if you did it on the face and you left a mark, you would probably go to jail or at least lose your children. That's why it's done on the butt, not because there's something special about it. So I think first we need to just be extremely honest with ourselves that this is beating your child. Now, we should all be open-minded here, and though that sounds extremely bad, maybe you should beat your child. We should look at the evidence. We should look at what Scripture says. We should look at what the saints say. Maybe you should beat your child. I think we've shown with the science, with the saints, and with Scripture that you shouldn't do that, and I will go into more reasons why you shouldn't do that, but that alone doesn't prove my point. I think it's just extremely important that we call a spade a spade. As St. John Baptiste de la Salle said, it degrades the soul. I agree with St. John Baptiste de la Salle absolutely on that point. Second, I think it teaches other lessons. And we can see where this ties in back scientifically, where spanking does not lead to moral internalization. And the reason is simple. When you spank your child for doing something that you see is wrong, or that is legitimately wrong, you are not teaching them that what they're doing is wrong. You are teaching them either to submit to authority or that might makes right. To put it simply, you are not teaching them, if your child steals something and then you beat them, you are not teaching them that stealing is wrong. You are teaching them that if you are bigger and stronger than someone, then you can use violence to get what you want. That is even more the case if what you are beating them for is not immoral. Such as, as is often the case, the if you don't stop crying, I will give you something to cry about threat that I have heard more times in my life than I can count, not just directed towards me, but directed towards a number of people. Is it a sin to cry? Did Jesus not weep? And yet you'll, you'll beat your child for it, not because it's a sin, but because you want compliance, because it inconveniences you. 
I believe it's that's completely indefensible and yet extremely common. And if you do not explain it to the child, though we will get into that as well, you are not teaching them moral lessons. You are teaching them that you are bigger and stronger than them. And that is why spanking stops working when it gets to the point that they are not so much smaller and weaker than you. Suddenly it stops working and suddenly they start rebelling against you. Yeah, maybe because you never taught them a moral lesson in their lives. I don't mean to get too upset here, but I do feel strongly about this. Okay, next, it's hypocritical. Often very hypocritical. Think of the reasons why people have to spank their children. One of the most common is don't hit your sister. Don't use violence against someone. Stop poking your brother or something like that. You are trying to teach your child, don't use violence. And so I'm going to use violence against you. You're a complete hypocrite. Don't use violence to get your way, I say, as I use violence to get my way. Or you need to control yourself. I say, as I let my anger run wild and do not control myself, it is completely and utterly hypocritical, often. And one of the most important points, as I mentioned before, but we need to go more into this, spanking does not correct vice. It does not. 100% spanking does not correct vice. And the reasons are simple. The idea that spanking could correct vice, first of all, often goes against the Catholic teaching of the use of reason. The Catholic teaching of the use of reason says that before the age of reason, children cannot sin. And if they are baptized, they are free from sin because they do not have the mental capacities to know the gravity of what they are doing if they were to do something that would otherwise be a grave or venial sin. The age of reason, by the way, is usually seen to be about the age of seven. Now. It can be a slightly earlier, depending on the child. It can be slightly later, depending on the child, much later if there, is, uh, if there are mental disabilities, but around the age of seven. Which means if you are spanking, beating your child before the age of reason, you are punishing your child for a crime of which he is absolutely innocent. If your child died at that second after he committed whatever you are seeing as a sin, God would not punish him. He would go to heaven. And yet you will punish him. You will punish him where God would not. First, I have to point out that because the child is 100% innocent and has committed no sin because he is under the age of being able to commit a sin, therefore you cannot remove his vice by beating him because there is no vice to be removed. Second, God would not punish him for what you see as the vice because he has not committed a vice because he cannot. And therefore, you are punishing what God would forgive. And I ask what that means in context of Matthew 6, 12. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You go to confession and ask God to forgive your worst sins, and yet you will not forgive your child who has done nothing wrong and is completely innocent. What does that mean also in context of Matthew 18, 21 to 35? Are you not acting the part of the unmerciful servant who was given mercy by his master, but would not show mercy on his own servant? And then, of course, above the age of reason, why would there be any need to turn to spanking? Could you not then just explain to the child who is now past the age of being able to actually understand the morality of the situation. Which brings us to an even greater point. Free will. What, first of all, is your goal in raising your child? Is it to get them to heaven or is it compliance? If it's compliance, then you have a choice to make. Do you want compliance now or later? If you want it now, spank them. They'll likely stop later, but you'll have compliance now. If you want it later, good luck. If you want them, on the other hand, as you should, to get to heaven, then you have to realize that they have to choose God to get to heaven. If you force them to do the right thing, it is not the right thing. There is a reason that God gave us free will. And being forced to follow authority is not a virtue. First of all, on a side note, which I should have mentioned before, 
Teaching your child to follow authority is perhaps one of the worst things you could teach them in the societies in which we find ourselves. I certainly do not want my child following the authorities they might encounter out in the world. I want them to do as the Bible says and question everything and hold fast to what is good. But second, I recognize that God gave my child free will. And once he has passed the age of reason, he has to choose the good path or else he is not on it. In Luke 15, 11 to 32, does the father of the prodigal son beat his child when he returns to him? Or is he not happy at his return? Did the prodigal son get forced into returning? Or was it meaningful exactly because he chose of his own free will to return to his father? Now, let me be clear. I am not in any way whatsoever advocating being hands off. That would be a complete dereliction of duty. I am not advocating for some Protestant idea of I don't baptize my child because I wait for them to decide it on their own or I don't force my religion on them because I want them to form their own opinions. Not even a little. That would be a complete dereliction of the most important of parental duties which is the education of your child. But the education of your child is not the enslavement of your child. Your duty as a parent is to use the rod of the shepherd to guide your child and to raise them in the instruction of the Lord by teaching your child. Now, the problem with this, for many people, is twofold. First, they have a problem with teaching their child. Because if their child actually asks them why we are doing something, they won't have an answer. Let me give an example. I think examples are best here. Say you, you tell your child, we're going to Mass. And your child's a little older, he's past the age of reason, maybe he's 8, 9, 10, who knows. But your child asks, why? First of all, if your child asks why, you have made a mistake. Your child should know why you should go to Mass. So you should first recognize you have made a mistake right away. You did not teach your child well. Second, a lot of parents' response there would be to spank their child or otherwise force them to go to Mass. If you do that, you have not in any way taught your child why he should go to Mass. He still doesn't believe that he should go to Mass. He just knows that if he doesn't, someone bigger and stronger than him will beat him. And then parents question why, after their children grow up, they stop going to Mass. This is a common example, I think. What you need to do is teach your child why. Because if your child is not convinced that he needs to go to Mass, then he will not go when he has the choice. Forcing him will not accomplish that. So you need to teach him. Which means you need to know your faith. You need to know why. If your child asks, why do I need to go to Mass, and you don't have an answer, you are the one sinning there, not your child. You are doing something that you do not even know if it is wrong or right. And it is so central to your religion that you have a responsibility to know whether it is wrong or right. Am I saying that going to Mass is wrong? By no means. You need to go to Mass every Sunday. That is absolute. And the reason doesn't have to be complicated. It could be because the church teaches that we need to go to Mass. And the Bible teaches we need to keep holy the Sabbath. Then your child might ask, well, why do we follow the church? You better have an answer. Because if you don't, it's a good question. And your child is right for asking it. And by asking it, he is driving both you and himself closer to holiness, not further away. I think the other problem with situations like this is pride. Most parents don't want to admit, you know, I don't know. You know, I have to look into that. You know, that's a good question, son, and I never thought of it. And I should look into why that is. Even if you have complete faith, it is not saying that you question in the way that, that oh, maybe my son's right and I don't need to go to Mass. No, 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 no. It's just, not that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that you should say, you know, I never thought about why we go to Mass on Sundays. I need to find the answer to that question. Not just for my son's sake, though certainly for that, but also for my own sake. But forcing your son to go to Mass will not be effective in any way. It will give you compliance. And it will make the people around you perhaps think of you as a good father. Look, his children are always at Mass. What a great parent. But it won't be true. Second is guiding. You have to guide your child, which means to live by example. The words 
do as I say, not as I do, should never leave your lips. Imagine saying instead, I am committing this sin in front of you, and yet I expect you to understand why you shouldn't sin. Good luck. Children imitate. They do what their parents do. I have myself, I have a cousin who his parents, their whole lives told him not to smoke. He turns 17, he starts smoking. Because children imitate. And it doesn't matter what you say. Actions speak louder than words. You can say every day of your life that smoking's bad for you, but if you keep doing it, your child knows either it's not that bad for you, or there's a reason to do it anyway, or you're just lying because your actions completely go against what you're saying. You're being completely hypocritical. If you're telling your child to read scripture, you better read scripture. If you're telling your child to go to mass, you better be going to mass. If you tell your child that they need to go to mass every Sunday, but you make excuses for why you don't need to go, then don't expect them to go to mass every Sunday and certainly don't punish them for what you yourself are doing. Remove the beam from thy own eye. In summary, we have found that spanking scientifically does not create a functional child, but in fact worsens their functionality. We see through scripture that spanking is not biblical. We see that the saints do not recommend spanking. Specifically, a saint who worked with children condemns it. And we see that spanking does not accomplish the goal of getting the child to heaven, simply because it is impossible for it to do so. Coercion cannot convert a soul. Knowledge and guidance can. And that is your job as a parent. Now, when I was talking about this with some people, they asked me, what's the alternative? Now, I would say, first of all, these two points, guide and teach. You need to know the answer to these questions or be willing to find them out, and you need to live your faith. There is no alternative to that. You need to do those things or else your child will see that you are a hypocrite and they will despise you and your methods for it. And to accomplish this, you need patience and you need charity, and you need to be humble. You need to be able to tell your child, I don't know. I will find the answer. I have faith. I will find the reason why it is so. But I will not beat you until you stop asking questions, going against the scriptural command of question everything. But as for other alternatives, that's a whole other video on its own. In fact, it's books of its own. It's, it's many videos of its own. But what I can say to start is if it were me, and it soon will be, I'm doing my own research on this topic as we speak to prepare for having children. I would read books on peaceful parenting. I would read the methods of John Bosco, Saint John Bosco. For some of the research I did on this topic, a few points I got from Dr. Gregory K. Popkak. I don't know how you pronounce his name, to be honest with you. And I purchased his book. I haven't read it yet. I can't endorse this book based on his points he made online. He seems to fall very much in line with my own thinking. Um, and I assume this book, Parenting with Grace, The Catholic Parent's Guide to Raising Almost Perfect Children, a little tongue-in-cheek there, but I would imagine that this is probably a very good place to start. I can't say for sure. I need to read it myself. Perhaps after I read it, I can give a review or tell you my thoughts on it. So that's where I would start. I would look at a book like Parenting with Grace. I would look at books even by non-Catholic authors about peaceful parenting. As scripture says, question everything and hold fast to what is good. Find what is good in that book and hold fast to that. And I would look into the methods of St. John Bosco. I would, I would do my research and find out what the best way to settle certain problems is. Because I've given you here what I believe to be the overall theme of how a Catholic parent should parent. But you will likely have questions about specifics. And there are probably specifics that I would not even think of because as I mentioned before in my disclaimer, I am not yet a parent. If you're interested, particularly in this topic, um, certainly I can release more videos um, on this topic about alternatives and different situations. And um, as I, over the course of years, as I have my own children, me and my fiance plan on getting double digits. So I can, over the years, give you what I learn experientially. But 
for now, I think that's a good overview of spanking and why you should not do it. And I hope even one person watches this and does not spank their child. Because it's not just about spanking, although it's certainly about spanking. It's about a complete change of perspective that your job as a parent is not in any way to force your child to do the right thing because forcing them would make it therefore not the right thing. Instead, your job is to explain to them why it is the right thing, to convince them of that, and then to show through your life how it can be done. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, things may have got a little heated there, I'm not sure. I do feel quite passionate about this. I think it is one of the greatest problems of our time, the fact that people beat their children. I think there are obviously, to be clear, much worse parenting practices that go on than spanking, but spanking is one of the most prevalent, and therefore I figured it needed to be covered. Um, if you have anything else you want me to talk about on any topic, let me know. If I have expertise of any kind, or if I'm interested more, more accurately in that topic, or, or have done research on it in the past, or want to do it now, let me know. If you want to get my take on something, or you want me to dive into something, uh, let me know. Um, if you want to support this, you want to see more stuff like this, please go to patreon.com slash yeomanvidya. That's patreon.com slash y-e-o-m-a-n-v-i-d-y-a. -E you can donate monthly. Or if you want to give a one-time donation, paypal.me slash yeomanvidya. You can donate there using a credit card or debit card or whatever. I also have a Bitcoin and an Ethereum link. Uh, links to my Bitcoin Ethereum wallets in the description. Somebody asked, so I have a Bitcoin wallet for this channel now. Somebody sent me $40 for the last video. I appreciate that. As always, I want to thank my patrons who give me money every month to make videos, um, even when the style of video suddenly drastically changes like this. And um, the guy who donated $40, let me look up his name. And the guy who donated $40, his name, if I'm reading this correctly, I broke my glasses, so bear with me. Uh, my Gun UFAC3, um, he asked to please do a video on the Protestant Reformation or the Roman Empire Schism between the East and the West. Both topics which are extremely interesting, and the first of which I have some knowledge of because if you don't know, I am a convert from an atheist family. So I did look at every religion that I could think of and eventually came to Catholicism as the truth. So there was a point in my life where I was looking at the Protestant perspective and seeing if that was the truth. Um, because I certainly didn't have any Catholic relatives. I did have some Protestant relatives. So I did myself come to some conclusions about the Protestant Reformation. But that is quite a topic. <laughs> that would be quite a presentation. So um, I will have to think whether or not that's something I can pull off and how quickly I can do so. Right now I'm still, um, to give an update, I'm still setting up the duck farm and that's taking a lot of my time. But luckily I was able to record this. I'm very happy about that. And I'll be trying to get these out as often as I can. But those bigger topics might have to wait until I'm out on the farm and I have lots of time to read. Whereas right now I have a little less and I'm just trying to shove it in wherever I can. Um, just like when weather's bad and stuff like that. So, um, so thank you again for the money. If you give money, it's no guarantee that I will cover your topic. I would say it's uh, proportional to how much money you give. If someone gave me $10,000, I would literally do whatever topic they wanted. <laughs> but you understand. Um, I appreciate the support. It's so that I can keep doing this. It, it's, it's really great. Um, it, it helps pay for duck feed. And it allows me not to have to like spend more time off the farm making some extra money to get by, you know, because farms, they're not always profitable and they're not always immediately profitable. Let me tell you that. Um, but anyway, um, thank you for the money. I do plan on eventually doing a video on one of those topics that the guy suggested, but we'll see. Um, anyway, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. If you think this is at all valuable, um, I really do encourage you to send this to somebody. And for once, this is not just because like, I'd like to get more views on my video, but like, I think this video is very important. Um, I hope I was convincing. I think I laid out pretty well all the different points. Um, 
So I, I hope people come to this with an open mind and I, I hope people share this with other people. And like I said, if even one kid doesn't get beat and their parents raise them with the intention of them getting to heaven, not just compliance, that will make it all worth it. And if you do have any problems with anything I've said here, if you have holes in anything I've said, I ask two things. Uh, one, I ask that you tell me, uh, that you leave a comment, you tell me, Michael, I think you were a little off on this. Michael, this fact you actually got wrong. Michael, you actually, it's not verse 22, it's verse 24 or whatever, you know. Even if it's minor, I, I want this to be correct. I can, you know, add corrections to this later if there's something I got wrong. I also ask for charity. I, I know that I got a little heated on this, but I think, you know, if, if what I'm saying is true, it's very reasonable to get a little heated about it. And um, I still, anyone who comments, I am at least going to go into it with the assumption that they want the same thing I want, which is that they want their child to get to heaven. They're looking for the best way to do it, even if they disagree with me. Um, and also I ask that if there's some specific point that you say, mm, well, you misspelled that word, you misspelled Proverbs, so your whole argument is null. I hope you don't go that far, you know. Um, if one little mistake I made, or even a big mistake, it doesn't mean the rest of it is completely... Like, if, I made, if there was some flaw in my logic down here, that doesn't mean the saints didn't say this up here, right? That, that's my point. Anyway, once again, for what, the third or fourth time, thank you for watching. Um, there will be more of this coming. I'm trying to get them out as quick as I can. It is just a matter of how quickly can I research these topics, especially if I didn't do a lot of research on, on them already. This, luckily, is just something that was on my mind because I am getting married in the fall and I we plan on immediately start pumping them out, you know? So I need to know how to parent my children. Okay. Anyway, thank you again for watching. Let's just, how many times can we say it? Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. God bless. I'll see you next time.